Welcome to another Railroad Online Showcase video, this time around, finally back at the coal mine with something at least halfway presentable. The last time I was here, it was all more theoretically, talking about what I thought I could do here, talking about some ideas that I had that could maybe work. And now I'm finally at a point where I can put them all into place at least to some degree. Had to get a bit of money, doing some other stuff, trying out some other setups and other industries and all that, but now I'm finally back on track with this one. So yeah, while in the last video that I showcased this entire area, the only track laid down here was the one with uh, currently the cars are parked on. I now have a bit of a setup here that looks more like a popper station. At least I have a few um, side tracks over here which I don't really have a very great plan for anything. It's more like another temporary setup, but at least something where I can get properly started with. At both ends, as I think it was already the case in the last video, we have uh, turnaround tables, so one on that end, and then one over here behind the engine. Can't really see anything, but trust me, it's there. Another thing that you can't see but is definitely in here is a helper engine. Right now we have three engines up here. The class 70 which I used to cut with 20 hoppers up here. We have um, little helper over here which is the pixel from the um, smelter. Yeah, that used to be the helper engine at the smelter but I switched it out for something else so that engine is really going places uh, I gotta say. Quite the career here. Oh yeah, and over there in the distance we have the turntable. The third engine and the most important one for this video is the Glenbrook, which I'm going to take uh, for a spin in a moment just to show you guys the um, entire route for the round trip, or at least most of it to be uh, clear. I don't plan on going down to the smelter, but I'm gonna be visiting the uh, call my base camp over there. So yeah, let's get started with that actually because other, other than that there's not too much uh, to show here. So yeah, it should still be at least halfway warm. Gotta make sure I properly maintain the entire uh, thing so it doesn't run out of fuel during the trip. It would be a bit embarrassing. <laughs> so let's go. This is now of course starting at the coal mine and going towards the... Uh, maybe also turn off a break. Going towards the iron works. The reason for those who may have not seen the other video uh, that I'm considering doing something like a round trip is because while the horizontal di um, distance between the coal mine and the iron works isn't all that great, the vertical one is um, proposing quite a problem. The most direct way is over the back of a mountain over there, which we are now traveling towards. I think this is either 1.5 or 2% incline. This is gonna be the only time that, uh, that the engine is gonna have to pull uh, loaded hoppers up a hill. The rest is only downwards and uh, up the empty cars again. It should be working out quite nicely. But yeah, that's a bit of an issue coming back up because the hoppers themselves are quite heavy and I don't think they are gonna do too well just, um, well, if I wanna go um, directly from the, um, uh, from the highest point uh, necessary on this line down to the ironworks, it would at least be uh, still, oh, that was quite tight over there, a 5% uh, incline. Not gonna do that with too many cars attached. Unless I have like multiple engines or something, so I had to come up with something. I could theoretically still try that, but uh, with um, just climbing up 5% or something, but I don't see that being too great of a solution. And here it is. This is right now a 10% drop. Quite interesting if you have a lot of cars attached because you would want to approach the switch which is kind of a um, crest of the entire thing. Uh, definitely need to pull the brake. I would need to um, approach the crest pretty slowly. 
when pulver breaks while it's uh, still moving over the crest and as soon as I'm over the top also jump out of the engine and uh, go towards the cars because if I don't tie down most of the brakes on the way down I'm not gonna make it in one piece. Already had that happen. Thankfully I saved right before that because uh, that would have been a nightmare to put back together. But yeah this is kind of a fun one. The other option to go down here is uh, up there with the 3% decline. Which is also how I brought up the um, Glenbrook to this uh, place uh, to begin with. But yeah this could be evened out a bit. Just looking at how quickly we come down here. There is a bit of um, of an even distance to travel before we even get to the switches, but it's not gonna be uh, too amazing. Uh, the tender already um, twitching like it wants to uh, rip itself off the, uh, off the track, so gotta be careful about that. But yeah, this is still um, kind of an easier part, but going back up that route, not happening. So I might as well still at some point try uh, something else and see how I could even out the um, decline if I take the, um, yeah, just the flap up uh, into um, consideration. Maybe even adding a loop or something if uh, necessary to make this work. A flat loop that is, not like a vertical loop-de-loop. Uh, -loop. <laughs> but we'll have to um, see about that. The place we are approaching here is... This is supposed to be the main line at some point. So that would go off towards the refinery, which I didn't really bother with um, to this point. So yeah, that's for later down the line. That part over there will uh, in the future go towards the oil field and it's already connected to the freight depot. But we are not going there today, that's not uh, where we are headed. So, here we are at the ironworks. Didn't really take too long. But again, with uh, hopper cars attached, I don't see this being yeah, too good of a way back if we just um, switched around here. And this again is a super quick and dirty temporary setup. I just had this line to drop off the coal and then to switch around. This is really just so I can bring the coal over here and then uh, go back to the coal mine to figure out fi uh, how to work that one before really diving into this entire area and the, the ironworks itself and all that. Because on the other, on the other side here, once we have all the um, uh, required resources delivered. There's still stuff that we can pick up here, but I haven't even bothered with that. Also, I haven't done any other delivery apart from coal and that maybe once or something. So this is still very early days. Only thing I did here so far is uh, maybe we can see it at some point. I don't know where I put it. Ah, over there. I put down a telegraph post at each of the um, industries in this uh, part of the valley. That's so why I have them for later. Also since there is a symbol from them on the map, it makes it easier to identify the exact location of the industry. Okay, I'm gonna have to quickly stop here and flick the switch. So the right one would be staying on the main line and if that was the wrong switch, goddammit. I hope this will rerail itself. I wanted to flick this one. So this would be the main line and the next uh, switch would get us back up the 10% incline. The one that we are going to follow however is the one connecting us uh, right away to the, um, uh, to the iron mine. So this is specifically made for that uh, round trip idea. Thankfully the tender rerailed itself. So, not too much of an issue right here. This is the thing that I've been considering all the time. I just... I should really go um, through with my idea of having... With this... Um, when I have two switches back to back, I should make sure that the um, same switch for the same one is always on the same side. So, 
let's say I come uh, towards it, the one with I, um, uh, the one up front should always have the switch, let's say, on the right side and the one in the back on the left side or something. I should really make that universal for these kind of situations so I don't run into those issues anymore. I'm just too lazy to do it, let's be honest. So going up this, I think, again, 1.5 or 2% line. Oil field in the background and over here is another atrocity that I built. This is the other part of the 3% decline. Looks like it's not connected over there, but trust me, that goes all the way down to the ground. It's just I got a bit lazy, didn't want to build on the side of a mountain anymore because I found this to be too much of a detour for what I had in mind and I decided to just cut straight through and just go down there. <laughs> it works. That's the important thing. Also another thing I wanted to mention since this is another coal mine video. I'm aware that uh, there is another update planned for Railroads Online which is gonna add coal as the fuel but only for the new engines which are planned some of which may come in the next update some of which may be a bit delayed I think there has been a silhouette of multiple trains um, or multiple train engines going around I think that's pretty cool I wouldn't even mind if all the um, if all the trains that uh, in reality would use coal were also updated to use coal in the game at some point the problem is with, um, with the map as it is and the engines that we have, I think there's only four engines that would really run on uh, wood. First up we have the two porters, secondly we have the Eureka, and thirdly and quite fittingly we have the Glenbrook over here. Which by the way I um, use this one because it also has a nice and high uh, top speed. Oh, oh. Maybe I don't want to use it or because the tender wasn't happy there. Or maybe the entire engine was just wagging its tail for the uh, appraisal that I just gave it. So it's scary. Anyways. Yeah, those would be the only engines available um, to use with wood if it was uh, realistic. By the way, we are now near the freight depot. With, um, um, with my train yard in the distance and the, well, the remains of the old line that would lead us up here. I haven't cut that out completely because at some point I may decide to just add a switch there and reconnect it. I don't know if I want to do that but I think it's still too early to just cut it off completely. Although the other end of the um, sawmill is already gone so I don't know it may be a relic of the past at this point. But yeah, I, I would be kind of okay with those few engines, you could even just call them free because the porters are mostly identical anyways, apart from one having a, another set of wheels and a bit more um, storage. But that would only be okay for me if the coal mine was actually more situated like the iron mine. Because it's not too much of an issue getting up here and doing all that stuff that you need to do right here with um, all the resources that you have at that point. But if you really have to connect the smelter as well and then go to the um, coal mine at its uh, current place, that's kind of a hassle. So the way the game works currently, I'm yeah, I'm glad that they don't re retroactively uh, apply the change to all the um, Engines that would in, re in reality also be powered by coal because that wouldn't work too well. But if a few of these things were changed, that would be fine by me. So we are now finally at the iron ore mine. So yeah, the position of a coal mine would need to change and also it would likely need to take just uh, stuff from the, um, from the sawmill. Maybe it could use... Um, Maybe the lumber from the sawmill and still the um, logs from the logging camp or something to be a bit different. And maybe maybe we would get something totally different at the place where the coal mine is currently. Maybe something like uh, copper. 
That's the copper mine and maybe also some other industries uh, making good use of that copper. Maybe a brewery or something would be nice. Let's have another use for the barrels. But that's uh, really theory, crafting and other kind of stuff. But yeah, if, um, if the game was uh, changed in a few ways, that would be uh, pretty good, but I guess. Well, if they did that and you had uh, access to coal that early, there wouldn't be any use for cordwood. Unless you would specifically need cordwood for a brewery again or something else that uh, needs a fire. But it's not really realistic to use that to smelt iron. But, yeah. So much about that. Now going down towards the smelter. And I'm not gonna go down all the way. We are going to um, cut that short a bit and just go to the, um, uh, to the coal mine base cap at that point. Because otherwise that's not gonna be too much fun and just uh, really stretch off a video more than it is already. So I'm gonna be a bit careful here. Just so that my um, that my tender doesn't get too unhappy again. But yeah, I think if the map was adjusted, it could easily support uh, needing uh, to feed most of the engines with coal, but as it is, coal is too far out of the way in order to um, make that Bloody hell. Uh, to make that happen without any hassle. Like the hassle that I just had with losing my 10 now. I knew that they increased the top speed of the engines, but did they do anything about the tenders? Because those seem to be even more of an issue than the actual cars at this point. Okay, let's see if I can get back up here. I had this already that the tender was heated into this area, but it was from the <laughs> uh, from the coal mine base camp actually. I tried to deliver some cordwood and well on the way out of the smelter area, uh, one of the empty uh, cars was heated towards um, well uh, towards the line uh, leading to the actual coal mine. So I can show that in a moment where that went. But first, I need to get back up here. And after recollecting that and going back into the, um, ah, there we go. After going back towards the, um, uh, the coal mine base camp, just by a snail pace traveling through that, the entire thing heated itself and the, um, yeah, the tunnel landed over here. But I could just do the same thing as I'm doing now, just riding it uh, down the line back towards the engine, so that was not too much of an issue, but still mighty unpleasant, especially since those two things happened right after each other, and yeah, the second one, while I was still trying to clean up the first uh, mess, so <laughs> that got a bit annoying. Come on. I didn't remember that this part really flattened out uh, all that much, but... Here we are, like nothing ever happened. Okay, I guess I'm gonna be a bit more gentle on the way down. Nah, don't you joke around. I see you, bloody tender. Speaking of tenders, I recently saw... Uh, I don't know if I should talk a bit... If I should talk uh, too much about that. But I recently saw a spreadsheet that had a track builder kind of thing, so you could determine yeah, I want that engine, I want to pull that many cars up that incline, or just check uh, how much of an incline I could uh, use that configuration on, or, well, how far I want to go up and everything like that. And I don't know if it's the case in the game as well, but the tender of the class 70 seem to have some negative weight values. So I was wondering if I should just get a few more class 70s, Sell the engines again, just keep the um, tenders after those are empty and just uh, yeah, put them on the front of other engines to pull the entire thing up like a pre-tender or something. And yeah, that was a whole setup just for a very bad word pun. You're welcome. So, I don't remember where I was. 
server cool thing. Sounds cool. Again, as it is, I'm not too unhappy that they don't retroactively change all the engines. Of course, that would be a bit of an issue. Maybe some additions like that in the future. Who knows? But I also saw that there are, um, that there are going to be like water towers, but for coal, and you need to um, resupply those. I hope they spawn in empty, otherwise it would be kinda bullshit, because then you're just uh, likely going to replace it more often than really um, resupplying it. But that sounds like a pretty decent idea. I could even imagine if a drop-off point for them, uh, for those silos or what you want to call them is um, allowing for it to be, uh, for, for the coal to be dropped from higher up. I could theoretically just make another loop from the coal mine, which just goes up to the um, point before the steep drop-off, and then just sticking to the side of a mountain without any decline. Just for a bit, and then just dropping it up from the side of a mountain into a very uh, far lower uh, place silo, and yeah, that would be one way to handle it without having to travel down into the valley and back up again. <laughs> But I guess it would be more for something like a, like another safe or something. I'm trying to keep this not necessarily even focused on realism, but uh, I'm not trying to do absolute bullshit with it. Okay, we may, we may need to pull a switch over here, so I'm gonna approach this carefully. Yeah, that needs to be flicked to the right. I'm gonna jump off and hope that the... Um, and isn't gonna run past me before I... Oh bloody hell, it's going to... Never mind, we are hitting the brakes and likely the reverser because, as I said, I am not planning to go down to the smelter. Because at this point you would need to go down there. What is it with this stupid bug? There we go. I would need to go down there, especially with uh, cars, drop off the iron and just uh, turn the entire train around and come back up the same line with the only difference is that um, there's another switch over there and that would lead me to go across here and into the base camp. Also another thing that I forgot to mention while I was at the iron mine, I'm considering to do something a bit like a hump yard, but uh, something that would be would be really useful at uh, that location specifically. Okay, the train just sticks to the three percent decline here without any brakes being pulled apparently. Um, there is that three uh, percent line that goes up into the mountains and over the back of the mountain towards the coal mine. I don't think I'm ever gonna use that and I might just replace that with uh, a line that starts out flat and then goes up for a bit before running into an end of uh, track device. Reason for that is I could just simply, uh, when I'm doing some arrangements with the uh, cars over there, I could just give um, helper engine some power so it rolls up the entire thing, cut the power, jump out of the um, of the engine before it even goes uh, to that point. Flick all the switches uh, to where I uh, want the um, entire thing to go and then just wait for it to roll back down backwards. That would be a huge help, especially since yeah, everything up there is on a bit of a, yeah, even an incline or a decline and I already had it a few times that some of the cars just hit the decline and then uh, I found them back at the sawmill or something, so... I could also use that to just uh, flip a switch at the end of the track just to avoid them ever running away from me. Or not at the end of the track, but at the, at the end of the station. Also, this is now a semi-permanent fixture over here. I have uh, finally bought enough of them. Um, uh, stack cars or what you want to call them, just to get some uh, rails up here and yeah, every time I'm gonna do a delivery towards the coal mine, I'm gonna come here with 20 cars of beams and collect three of the rail cars and then 
later on deposit the empty free cars uh, somewhere down at my station or something. So that's been working quite well. I'm gonna give it not too much here. And then this is just now the way back to the entire uh, coal mine. So we are almost uh, done with it. It's just a rather long trip, but the Glenbrook, thankfully, is quite a quick one. And the Glenbrook is still one of my most favorite engines in the game. I like the look of it, I like how quick it is, it has a decent amount of uh, traction. Also a pretty decent one to get early game. I think another good option just for um, pulling stuff would be the class 48. Although that's not quite that quick, but it is a bit lighter, especially considering that the class 48 doesn't have a tender. And it has a bit more um, base traction, so overall it's a bit more powerful. But what I like about this one is that it doesn't have a setup where you need to go besides the engine. You can just you have a little hut in here and you can just enter and have everything uh, right in front of you instead of yeah, just squeezing in on the side and having to deal with the entire thing that way. It's pretty nice. At least for the way the game works, I think in reality, if you have a... I don't know, would it be the conductor, the engineer or somebody standing right here dealing with all the instruments and then the fireman trying to resupply um, the fuel over here. They would get into each other's way, so standing on the side that would be better for the, for the fireman if, uh, no, if nobody else was in, the, in his way, but for just single... Um, for the single player purposes, I like this one more. Even though, again, I have to acknowledge that this would not be the greatest way to handle it in, a, in reality when you actually have multiple people working on the engine. But yeah, we are now in the middle of the entire trip over here and I think the, the car that I mentioned earlier that flew all the way from the smelter landed somewhere on that plateau over there. So that was quite the trip getting here and getting it back from there and then again the tender flew off because of course it did. But yeah, this is now a very smooth 1.5% incline towards the was a coal mine over there, so yeah. I'm considering to maybe uh, try the Cook 280, I think that's the name of it, instead of uh, running the class 70 for the, for the coal cars, I'm gonna likely just just load them up over there, and then for the, for the last part where it needs to go up, see if, uh, if the Cook can handle that, because that would be um, likely a faster engine than the class 70 and for some of the stuff like this where you just have a lot of long straightish parts with not too much of an incline I think a faster engine would do a better job here and yeah the critical parts are always that two percent incline with a um, full set of cars oh and oh no that's uh, because I filled up the inside it doesn't look too natural over there but Never mind, it's okay. And the 3% incline uh, from the smelter with empty cars. I don't know which one is a bit more um, demanding, but those two are really the only ones where stuff could really be uh, come problematic. That's also the reason why I try to use that uh, train builder spreadsheet, because I wanted to figure out if maybe the cook could actually be uh, better on, yeah, on inclines, because while it is a bit, it's a bit less powerful than the um, class 70, but it also doesn't weigh nearly as much. By the way, we are back towards the coal mine, over where it is, on the other side of the, of the valley here, so yeah, 
almost there. I'm glad I used the Glenbrook because this one is at least a bit more quick on its wheels. But yeah, I've, I wanted to find out whether or not the um, hook at some point could be uh, outperforming the class 70 on inclines due to its lesser weight. But since the class 70 has a, for some reason a negative base weight for the um, for the tender and I think I heard that uh, the tenders will always have the same weight anyways no matter if they are loaded or unloaded. I don't know how the game handles it and I don't even know how the spreadsheets uh, how the uh, spreadsheet handles all the data so I can't really tell if it would be accurate. But who knows. So I would like a definitive answer to that, but I don't have one right now. Maybe maybe I'm contact the spreadsheet maker and um, if I get some info out of them, I might just uh, relay that to you guys. Because that would be quite useful to know in my opinion. But still, the cook is faster anyway, so as long as it can handle what I'm uh, making, what I'm attempting here. It should be the better choice anyways. And I don't really want to use class 70s for everything. That would be pretty boring. I have two already. Since I got the one that I, well, had fly away on me. I, have, I found those pieces again, so yeah. I think it might have been the last episode that I made before this one. So you should all be pretty well informed about that. But yeah, I'm having two of them now. One for general purpose, the other one is currently parked at the smelter because that's my dedicated engine for uh, quad food deliveries now. And we have the one at the um, smelter with the quad food, that's actually the one that uh, exploded on me, if, if you want to call that. But yeah, we are back finally at the smelter. Took a while, but I think it was quite a nice trip. With a few minor hiccups, but overall, I could have done worse. Knowing from experience, yeah, this could have gotten so much worse. And here we are. So, yeah, I'm likely just, as I said, going to load up all the hoppers. And first up, try this with, um, with a Cook 280. And if that doesn't work, I'm gonna have to stick to the good old class 70. So, gonna see how that uh, pans out and I might have um, another update on that in a few videos. I have another topic that I want to shoot, so I'm likely going to do that right after this video, so I don't expect any answer to what I discussed today in the next video. <laughs> But till then, I hope you enjoyed and see you next time. Bye bye.